Hey everyone, this lesson is on yellow fever. In this lesson we're talking about what causes this condition. We're also going to talk about the pathogenesis, the signs and symptoms, the diagnosis, and the management of yellow fever. So yellow fever is a hemorrhagic fever due to an infection from viruses of the family Flaviviridae. The family Flaviviridae are small single-stranded RNA viruses. I'm going to talk a bit more about what I mean by hemorrhagic fever in the next slide. Transmission of yellow fever involves mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the vector for yellow fever and the species of mosquito depends on what part of the world you're in. So in Africa the mosquito species is actually Aedes species so it's generally the Aedes aegypti species and this is a picture of Aedes aegypti. In South America it is a different species the Haemagogus species of mosquito and what happens is mosquitoes pick up this virus of the family Flaviviridae, usually from monkeys, and transmit it to humans. So it transmits from an infected monkey to a non-infected human, or it can transmit it from a infected human to a non-infected human. So that's how the mosquitoes act as the vector for this virus. And risk factors or influencing factors for getting infected with yellow fever include travel to endemic areas. We talked about this before. Africa and South America are generally two areas where you're going to see this virus and its highest prevalence in South America and Sub-Saharan Africa specifically. And the prognosis of yellow fever is worse with older adults. So the older you are, when you get infected, the worse the prognosis for this condition. The pathogenesis of yellow fever starts by a female mosquito biting someone and intradermally inoculating that individual with 1,000 to 100,000 viral particles. So that mosquito, like Aedes aegypti, releases or inoculates that virus into a person when they are having a blood meal. Then what happens is that the virus multiplies locally in dendritic cells in the area of the bite and spreads to local lymph nodes. Then there's primary replication that occurs in monocytes and macrophages and in large histiocytes. This essentially leads to spreading of the virus lymphatically where it seeds into other organs. The liver, the spleen, and the lymph nodes are generally the sites where the virus likes to produce. So these are the spots of the body that are going to be affected the most. During the viremic phase, which is just the steps we've just talked about, an infected human can transmit the virus to a blood-feeding mosquito. And the viremic phase is generally in the first three to six days of infection. So when a person is in the viremic phase, again, those first three to six days of infection, another mosquito of the AD species or the Haemagogus species can come, land on them, bite them, and become infected, and then that mosquito can be a vector to infect other individuals. Eventually, because the virus continues to produce and replicate in the liver, large viral loads in the liver can cause liver damage, generally in the mid-zone. And you can also see eosinophilic degranulation with what we call councilman bodies. Councilman bodies are condensed nuclear chromatin. And then in the late stage of disease, you can get circulatory shock due to excessive increases in cytokine levels. So having that in-depth overview of the pathogenesis of yellow fever, we can start to begin to see some of the symptoms, the clinical presentation of yellow fever. There are actually three stages of infection of yellow fever. The first stage is what we call period of infection, which is an abrupt onset of symptoms within the first three to six days of inoculation. During this period of infection, the person gets febrile and has generalized malaise, and the fever is associated with what we call Faget's sign or Faget's sign. And this is when there's a slow heart rate in comparison to the fever. There's also headache and photophobia, myalgia, and there's also anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and epigastric tenderness, which is important to remember. And there can also be irritability and dizziness and lumbosacral pain. There can also be reddened conjunctiva and mucosal membranes. So you can look at an individual's eyes and you can see very uh, reddened conjunctiva or conjunctivitis. The next stage of infection is what we call a period of remission. As its name suggests, there's a remission of fever and symptoms. So the symptoms we just talked about in the period of infection seemingly go away and can be gone for at least 48 hours. So majority will recover at this time, but 15% of patients will transition to the third stage. The third stage is what we call period of intoxication. It occurs during the third to sixth day after onset of infection, so after onset generally of the symptoms. There's a return of the fever, 
return of the nausea, vomiting, epigastric pain. You also get jaundice and oliguria, which is decreased urine output. We also see organ dysfunction, such as hepatic dysfunction. You can imagine there's so much viral replication within the liver, it becomes damaged and becomes dysfunctional. So you're going to see the AST generally exceeding the ALT in this hepatic dysfunction in yellow fever. And this is the reason why we see jaundice. You can also see renal failure. So the oliguria or the decreased urine output can actually progress to complete cessation of urine output or, or anuria. And you can also have hemorrhage. And that's why we call yellow fever a hemorrhagic fever. So what happens is individuals can begin to have coffee ground hematemesis. They can also have melina and hematochesia from an intestinal bleed, hematuria, epistaxis, or a nosebleed, and petechiae and ecchymoses. So if you look at the skin, they can have petechiae and ecchymoses. And this all happens because of thrombocytopenia or low platelet levels, which is due to issues with the spleen and decreased coagulation factors, specifically decreased factor 2, 5, 7, 9, and 10. And many of these are made in the liver, which makes sense again, because we talked about the viral replication occurring in the liver and causing liver damage. You can also see myocardial injury. Individuals with yellow fever can have bradycardia and myocarditis and eventual shock. And there can also be CNS dysfunction, causing delirium, agitation, and convulsions. So in the period of intoxication, you can see that it can be quite devastating with regards to symptoms. So how do we make the diagnosis and what can we do to treat or manage yellow fever? Diagnosis of yellow fever involves serology. So we do ELISAs looking for IgM to the specific virus that causes yellow fever. We can also do PCR for detection of the viral genome and we can do histopathology and generally we only do histopathology post-mortem. And unfortunately because this is a viral infection there's no specific treatment for yellow fever. A lot of times it's supportive care and generally because of all of those significant symptoms we need to do intensive care. And the supportive care generally focuses on nutrition, treating the hypotension from shock, preventing hypoglycemia, treating the bleeding using FFP, and dialysis for individuals with renal failure. And there is some research into using high doses of ribavirin to treat yellow fever. But the best thing to do is to try to prevent getting infected with yellow fever in the first place. And this is done by getting a live attenuated vaccine. And this is the yellow fever 17D vaccine. So again, diagnosis using ELISA for IgM or PCR for detection of the viral genome. There's no specific treatment because this is a viral infection. It's generally supportive care. And we want to prevent getting yellow fever in the first place by giving a live attenuated vaccine, the yellow fever 17D vaccine. So if you want to learn more about other infectious diseases, please check out my infectious disease playlist. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.